Hi, welcome back. And today we're going to continue in our Revelation series as we start uh, Revelation 13 today. But uh, before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would illuminate every passage of scripture that we cover today. We are covering a, a topic that uh, you told us to study. If we have wisdom and if we have understanding, let us count the number of the beasts. So today we're going to be talking about this number. And I pray that uh, you would give us wisdom and understanding in all things. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, this is definitely an interesting chapter, and uh, uh, this has been covered by a lot of theologians, a lot of uh, Bible scholars, and uh, I, I know that there's a lot of guesses and a lot of speculation on who the Antichrist is and the number, but we are, we're just going to stick with the Bible. Uh, we can, you can uh, look at those studies on your own. Uh, there, there's some good studies out there, some good guesses. Uh, frankly, I don't know who the Antichrist is, but we are supposed to, to count and count the number of the beast. And, and if we have wisdom and understanding, we're supposed to. And uh, the Bible also says in, in 2 Thessalonians that the man of sin will not be revealed until the church is taken away. Um, in other words, we, we probably won't see the Antichrist. And uh, he won't be revealed until the, the, the church is taken away. Does that mean that we won't have an idea or a clue who it is? Uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, there might be. There's definitely some heavy players right now that uh, could be good candidates. And we can only speculate. But the truth is we don't know until the Holy Spirit is taken out with the church. And uh, that, sh that event should be happening soon. It seems like every day that more and more things are happening. And uh, I, think, I think it's coming soon, sooner than most people realize. Well, anyways, back to Revelation chapter 13. As a way of inter introduction, uh, this chapter will cover the mark of the beast and his worship. And you want to make a particular note on the number 13 and the number 18. I personally believe that the Bible is, even the, the chapters and verses are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And uh, you'll note that in verse 18, the number 666 is uh, given to us. And it's ironic that it's in chapter 13, which is the number of rebellion. Look out for all the 13s in the Bible. That's an interesting study as well. If you, if you study every chapter 13, every verse 13, there's a... Uh, there's an evil connotation connected with that number, even in the verse markings. And when you get to verse 18, which is 6 plus 6 plus 6, you get the number 666. And we'll see, uh, we'll see a few more verses like that in today's study that have 13s and 18s. Uh, let's, let's begin by reading verses 1 through 2. The Bible, the Bible says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were, were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him, gave him his power uh, and his seat and his authority. So let's notice some things about this verse. First of all, he comes out of the sea. Um, this this is not just any sea. This sea is a, a special sea. The sea is a sea that's above uh, the firmament. Remember in a past lesson we discussed how the Antichrist or the devil, I'm sorry, uh, Leviathan wades and, and goes in and out of these uh, this water above. And uh, there. If you notice in Revelation, there's also a verse that talks about the sea of glass, which is above the firmament. Well, anyways, this sea is where the Antichrist comes out of, this beast. Uh, for that, let's look at Isaiah 27, verse 1. The Bible says, In that day the Lord with his sword and great strong sword shall punish Leviathan, we talked about him last lesson, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Here's the sea. This is where the beast comes out of. He's going to make his appearance after the church is raptured out. 
And uh, for for this, we get we get small illustration. There's all kinds of illustrations in the Old Testament on the Antichrist and all kinds of uh, uh, types, typology of the Antichrist that the Holy Spirit has given us in the Old Testament. But for for this picture right here, uh, let's look at 1 Kings 18. There's the number 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. Let's look at 1 Kings 18, verse 44. The Bible says, And it came to pass in the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say it to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Now they were there was a drought in that uh, in that time period, and Ahab is another picture of of maybe the false prophet or the Antichrist. His wife Jezebel is definitely a, a picture of the harlot church that Revelation talks about. But notice there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Remember, the, the devil himself, he's an imitator of Christ. And Jesus, when he appears in a cloud, he is going to rapture the church in a cloud. And we will be with him forever in that cloud. And wherever the Lord is, we will be with him when he returns for the second advent. But notice, like Jesus has a cloud, the devil himself, the Antichrist, has a little cloud too. And it comes out of the sea like a man's hand. He, it be this, this dragon, this beast, becomes a man. Uh, it's interesting how the Holy Spirit uh, gives you these snapshots all throughout the Bible. Now next, uh, he has these ten horns. Back to Revelation 13, 1 and 2. He has these ten horns. And those ten horns represent the ten buddies that are coming back with uh, the Antichrist, the devil. He has ten, uh, ten angels that will come down as men, and uh, they will have crowns. So they have power that has been given unto them through the, through the devil. And uh, as he comes with the, his ten buddies, these ten horns, he has the name of blasphemy. Uh, and we're going to get into that in a minute about the blasphemy of the Lord. And then uh, another thing we want to notice about this beast is he's like a leopard. The, the Bible describes him many ways because of his characteristics, the way he moves, uh, his typology. What, uh, and you need to study what these uh, uh, animals are connected with, what they represent, so you can better understand the Antichrist when he does come. Well, anyways, he's like a leopard. For that, we have a good uh, picture in Hosea, Hosea 13, verses 6, or verses 6 through 7, which says, According to their pasture, they were so filled, so were they filled. Uh, they were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they have forgotten me. That's Israel. They forgot God. And uh, that's the condition of the world today. I know that there's some good people yet, and but when the church is gone, there will be any, there won't be any good people. Uh, the body will be gone, and the people re, that are left behind will forget about God. In verse seven of Hosea thirteen, it says, "Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, and as a leopard. By the way, will I observe them?" So remember, the Lord talks about in Jeremiah that the the devil is his hammer the hammer of the earth, the great hammer. And he uses the devil to punish uh, wicked doers and evil doers, or he wouldn't allow the devil to operate, period. So he has a purpose with him, even though the devil's uh, evil and works against God, but God still has control over him. And he's going to use this uh, antichrist, this beast, uh, to observe and to see what Israel will do and the, the, the Christ-rejecting Gentiles how they will will respond when uh, they are given a choice to to serve the Lord uh, or the Antichrist. And notice he has feet like a bear. Uh, if you watch videos of bears, or maybe you've seen them in the wild uh, on your own, they they can stand up and walk upright like a man. So th this feet like a bear also shows you that this beast is going to come as a man. He's going to appear as a as a human being. Um, and what's interesting about this beast, this, this bear, and you can study the bear in the Old Testament. There's a lot of passages. One, I, off the top of my head, I'm thinking about the, 
uh, where Elisha just got uh, the double portion of the Holy Spirit that Elijah had, and he came out of the uh, out of the woods, and these kids came out making fun of him. Apparently, he had a bald head. They called him bald head, and and he didn't like that very well, and so he cursed the children. And two she bear bear came out of the wood and tore up. 42 of them. 42 is the same number that we've been reading about the 42 months, the last three and a half years of the tribulation. So there's kind of a uh, a tribulation con, um, connotation in that text uh, about the two she bear. But anyway, it's this this uh, beast has his feet like a bear and is going to tread on Israel. Look for this. Let's look at Revelation 11 verse two. We've studied this in a Revelation 11 lesson. The Bible says, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Uh, that's uh, after they after they rebuild the temple, the, the part that's outside will be for the Gentiles and they will be fighting against Israel. And it says, uh, and the holy city, verse two of Revelation 11, the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 in two months, there's that number 42 again, uh, that this this beast that comes back after the two witnesses are taken up, after the first three and a half years, the last three and a half years, the great tribulation is going to be uh, even worse than the first half because the devil has come down. He knows he has but a short time and uh, he he bring, rises this beast. He, want, he, he expects the world to worship this beast this image of of his uh, the devil's son. Now, for another passage on this animal, uh, look at Proverbs chapter twenty eight and verse fifteen. The Bible says, "As a roaring lion and a, rang a ranging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people." There's the Antichrist. He's a uh, a wicked ruler compared to compared with a bear and a lion. And notice uh, in Revelation 13, 1 and 2, that this beast has a mouth like a lion. Now, some will use that and say that it has, it has something to do with him being an English-speaking uh, person. Uh, I mean, that, that could be a good guess. But we know for sure uh, that the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's 1 Peter 5, 8. But this lion is connected, definitely connected with the devil, and it's, it's a, a representation of his power and his strength and what he is going to do to this world, the world that's left behind during the tribulation. We know that there's going to be cannibalism and we know that people are going to be eating people. So he has a mouth like a lion. Lion has been known to eat up people. They used him in the crusades to, to torture Christians. They, they fed Christians to the lions. Well, anyways, for this, let's look at Jeremiah 5 verse 6 on this lion. This lion characteristics. The, the Bible says, Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. Now, Revelation 13 doesn't mention the wolf, but uh, Jesus mentions wolves uh, uh, and compares them with the, the, the false preachers and the, the, false, uh, the false ministers that uh, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. So he's going to come out... Uh, to kill people for sure, but he's going to do it with uh, the guys as if he is a wolf or as he as if he's religious, but he's really a wolf and he's a wolf of the evening. He's going to spoil the people that are left. And also notice in Jeremiah 5 verse 6, a leopard shall watch over their cities. Uh, so the, the Antichrist as a leopard is going to watch over the cities and and uh, monitor them and we see this now with, with uh, the way they they watch everybody and uh, nothing is hid nothing is secret everything you say is is uh, scrutinized and uh, and monitored well, he's going to watch over the cities like a leopard now continue in jeremiah 5 6 it says everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces you know what that implies people are going to be hiding no one's going to be out doing anything People are hiding for their lives. If they have to get food, they'll have to scrounge and do it on their own. And the Bible talks about uh, fornications and sorceries and murders and thefts. So it's going to be 
a, a, a horrible time. Now, notice again in Jeremiah 5, 6, that every, okay, we read about the being torn in pieces, but also because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. Remember, instead of getting right with God, they, they get worse. So it's, it's horrible. Now, notice uh, in Revelation 13, 1 and 2, he has a seat. He has a seat. We saw that uh, verse 2. He was given the dragon, the devil gives this Antichrist his power, his seat, and great authority. So uh, this this image, this uh, uh, the Antichrist, which is the, the devil's son, his seed, is going to have his power and a seat. And for his seat, look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. John talked about this already. He said, I know thy works. And where thou dwellest, and where Satan's seat is. So he has a seat somewhere here on this earth. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even those in those days where Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. And that was Rome. So that's what uh that's where his seat is, is in Rome. So you you kinda I mean, if you can't figure that out by now, then you might want to look into that. And do some research on Satan's seat in Rome. Now, about this seat, this seat, he wants to expand the seat. Because remember, the, the, the Jews will be rebuilding their temple. They will have made a peace treaty with this Antichrist when he first comes on the scene after the rapture. And for the first three and a half years, it will be peaceful. They will resume their sacrifices. They will uh, resume their temple worship, which they uh, haven't done in years. And for this, look at 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. The Bible says, Who opposeth, he's talking about, this is talking about the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple, showing himself that he is God. When the time's right for him, he's going to sit in the, te the Jewish temple and he's going to say he's the Messiah. And if you are waiting for a post-tribulation rapture, um, this is this is going to be bad because you may think it may be deceived because of the of the strong delusion that this is Jesus Christ, and uh, and uh, you'll wish that you had been part of the rapture of the church. But notice that he sitteth as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing them himself that he is God, and people will worship him as God. Now, more on the uh, Revelation chapter 3. Let's look at verse 3. The Bible says, And I saw one of his heads. Remember, Leviathan has seven heads. It says, One of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So what happens here? Well, in the, the middle of the tribulation period, the Antichrist gets a head wound. And uh, we will read about that in a second, because the Bible gives uh, detail about that. But uh, he has a deadly wound. He has some enemies that aren't happy that maybe they weren't even Christians. Maybe they uh, were worshiping another god. There's many religions on this earth, and they didn't like the idea that he said that it was him that he had to worship. So somebody tries to take him out. And you know, for a picture of this, we're going to look at Absalom. Absalom, if you study the life of Absalom, he has a lot of character characteristics and similarities with him and the Antichrist. And uh, that's another lesson. It'd be, uh, that's also an interesting study. But notice that uh, Absalom is a picture of this. Look at 2 Samuel 18. There's our 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. 18 verses 14 through 15. Uh, they, were after, they were after Absalom after his rebellion. David had to flee, and uh, he had to flee Jerusalem. And, and uh, for a while, Absalom was uh, uh, treated as the king. But look at verse 14. It says, Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. That's the other thing. He has a head wound. The, the tree grabs his hair. He had long hair and hung him. 
by a tree and he, while he was hanging there, they took three darts, three bullets and put it through his heart. And look at this. And 10 young men, there's the 10, there's 10, that number 10 is, is uh, always showing up with the Antichrist. It says, and the ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. So they, 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 they killed Absalom. There's the Antichrist. So he gets, he gets a mortal wound. Now, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, Thou wentest forth uh, for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. So there's another head. Uh, it says, Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. That would be the Antichrist. And he gets another, the Bible describes a head wound. And what's really pe peculiar about this head wound is it gets healed. Just as the Jesus Christ dies, was buried, three days rose again, the Antichrist will, will imitate that and come back to life. Look at Zechariah eleven seventeen gives another uh, more details on this head wound. The Bible says, "Woe to the idol shepherd!" Idol spelled uh, I D O L as idol worship. Woe to the idol shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, upon his right eye. So he gets a head wound right through the eye. Also, it wounds his his arm, and uh, Joab. Uh, takes three darts through his heart. So whatever happens really gets him good. And his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. So uh, when he comes back to life for the remainder of his time, he will have one uh, dark eye. It will be black. And uh, I think of Popeye. Popeye the sailor man, he had a, a, a black eye. He had a, a cover over his eye. Uh, there is a, a club called the Black Eye Club, and you can do some research on that, where all the elites, uh, they uh, probably are doing homage to this person, and they they blacken their eyes. Uh, someone knocks them, and it's probably part of an initiation, but they, they all get black eyes to represent their leader. Now let's look at uh, Revelation 13, verse 4. The Bible says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So when he comes back, uh, the people will realize that there's nothing anybody can do. Nobody can assassinate him. Nobody can gain control over him. And when we read about Leviathan in Job 41, uh, there's no weapon formed against him will, uh, that will, can penetrate other than the word of God. Now, the Antichrist... Notice, he, when he comes back to life, will be possessed with the devil himself. The devil's son, will, which is a devil, will be possessed with the, de uh, the devil himself. Uh, for this, we've already seen this uh, happen in uh, uh, the New Testament. Remember when Jesus, he had a devil with him, who was Judas. And we talked about how Judas is the Antichrist. And even though Judas was a devil, the Bible says in Luke 22, verse 3, Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. So even though Judas was a devil, he was possessed by the devil himself. And that's what happens uh, uh, midway through the tribulation when uh, this, this assassination attempt happens and the devil uh, goes into the Antichrist and comes back to life and when that happens it gets really bad well let's read verses 5 through 11 revelation uh, revelation 13 i apologize if you hear my dog in the background she's barking a little bit um, but we're going to keep going here revelation 13 uh, verse 5 the bible says and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months there's forty two and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against god to blaspheme his name his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations 
and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And if any man uh, have an ear, let him hear. Uh, I apologize, I gotta let my dog in. I know it's a distraction, but if I don't, she's gonna keep barking and, and, and it might get worse. <laughs> I guess she wants to be part of the Bible study too. Okay. All right. I hope she's happy. Now, Revelation uh, 13, verse 9, or verses 5 through 11. Let's continue. Verse 10. That's where we were. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with, with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake like a dragon well we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about that that's the the false prophet but let's let's talk about this blasphemy uh, I don't know the exact words that he's going to use but just by saying that he is God is the ultimate blasphemy and uh, for this let's look at revelation 14 verse 5 the Bible says a faithful witness will not lie. But a false witness will utter lies. We just That's all the devil does. He's a liar from the beginning. Murder from the beginning. He's a liar. Uh, and the father of it. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 32. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. But the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. So the, the Antichrist, uh, the, this blasphemy is just going to be a complete abomination. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Uh, saying the most horrible things about God and uh, it it will be it'll be utterly perverse even uh, Jesus warned about this in Mark chapter 13 verse 14 uh, the Bible says but when ye see the abomination of desolation there's the Antichrist spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not it standing where it ought not calls it a thing this this beast let him that readeth understand, this is a constant theme, the Holy Spirit's uh, trying to get us to understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Why, why is it mentioning Judea? Because this is the temple in Jerusalem, and uh, the Antichrist comes in, standing where it ought not, which is the seat of God, trying to usurp his authority, putting all these blasphemies out, and when that happens, if you have understanding and you realize what's really going on during that time, the Bible says you need to flee uh, if you're and get to the mountains, hide in the mountains. Uh, not, don't stay, don't stay for a second. Get out of, as fast as you can. Jesus was warning them. Uh, and notice that wasn't directed at the church. This isn't the Gentile church that we're supposed to flee to the mountains of Judea. No, this is something that takes place in the future when the church is gone. Now notice that uh, this beast, this Antichrist, has war with the saints. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, verse 18, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Uh, whatever the devil is going to say, the Antichrist says, is just going to be piercing, uh, maybe death sentences. But the tongue of the wise is health. Now think about the two witnesses. The two witnesses uh, will be preaching for the first three and a half years and testifying against the Antichrist, and he's had enough. And at the, the midpoint, he, in Revelation eleven seven, we see this. And when, when, they, when they shall have finished their testimony, the two witnesses, the beast that ascendeth up out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So the, there's the blasphemies. He has his death orders against these uh, two witnesses, which are Moses and Elijah. And then after that, that's when the false prophet appears. We see the, the beast that, uh, uh, verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. He had the mouth of the devil. And... Uh, at first, this false prophet will, will appear religious, will appear holy, and appear to give such wonderful, fair speeches, and will tickle the ears of the world, and yet he will have the words of the devil. And if you know anybody where Satan's seat is, 
that tries to pretend that he is Christ or or sitting in Christ's seat and um, t tickles the 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 ears of the world and follows all of Satan's policies and whatever the devil tells him to say he he tries to um, get the world to go along with that well there's your false prophet and maybe that will be his position as well in the future but anyways uh, he will appear religious or appear holy and the world will listen to him and he will speak exactly what the devil tells him to and notice he has the signs of an apostle let's look at uh, Revelation 11 verses 12 through 14 and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him this this false prophet and he causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire cometh down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that they that dwell on, on the earth by means of those miracles which had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make uh, an image to the beast, beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So he, he's saying, you know what, we this the, the false prophet will come on the scene and say, you know what, we need to make an image of the, the Antichrist. And we need to, he, we're going to put life in that image. Maybe that's where artificial intelligence comes in uh, maybe that's the end game that's where all of the, this is heading and he's going to bring life and say you know what not only do you got to worship the Antichrist but wherever you see his image you got to worship that as well and uh, and he will validate the the false prophet will validate the image of the Antichrist and uh, he will call fire from heaven he will have the signs that even Elijah had uh, by calling fire from heaven um, maybe he'll call airstrikes on certain countries or certain towns. Uh, remember we read about the leopard that watches over the cities. He's going to monitor, and if you don't behave, then that's it. He does a, a strike against you. And we see, uh, Paul told us about this in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So he's going to have all the signs of the apostle, apostles. Now, um, look at Revelation for, for further on this work. Look at Revelation 16, verses 13 through 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for which go forth unto the kings of the earth and unto the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So his job, the part of the other job of the false prophet, also the Antichrist, the beast, is to get the whole world ready for the final battle, which will be the second advent, the second re, the second coming and the return of Jesus Christ when he comes uh, with his vesture dipped in blood and he has a sword in his mouth, which is the word of God, and he's ready to destroy his enemies. Well, uh, this is the devil's last stand. Uh, his battle of the bulge, his last stand, he will uh, gather all the armies uh, together to to do one last battle. And he'll use his image to help stir up the people uh, wherever they see this image to worship it and give homage to the, to, the, to, the, to the Antichrist, to the beast. Now, Revelation 13, verse 15 says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. We spoke about that, the artificial intelligence possibly, uh, or something else. But it says that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is it. This is uh, where the end game comes in. Where, where, where This is why they need to keep track of everybody. This is why they are monitoring everybody. Why they want people to be uh, chipped. So they can, they can follow them, monitor them, and know who is going to be on the Antichrist side and who's not. Because in the end, right now, they're, you know, because of the Holy Spirit, they're kind of restricted. But when the Holy Spirit's gone, they will, there will be nothing to restrict them from killing anybody that does not go along with their agenda. Uh, I got another passage on this image that uh, the, the false prophet raises up 
to uh, to the Antichrist to, for his image. And uh, this is also pictured from the life of Absalom. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 18. There's your 18, 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6, which, and 6 plus 6 plus 6, 18, 18. The Bible says, Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar. There's his image which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name and called, uh, and is called under this day Absalom's place. It's very interesting, very, very similar to what is going to take place with uh, the false prophet. And uh, I find it interesting as well that it's called Absalom's place. Remember when Judas died, the Bible says he went to his own place. That's repeated by the Holy Spirit for some reason. Now, uh, as we get to the end of this chapter in Revelation 13, let's look at the mark itself. Let's read verses, thir or verses 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Not on, but in. Something they put in their forehead. And no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name verse 18 get this here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and we said this before the antichrist is not a system it's a man and his number not a system's number but his number is six hundred three score and six or six Six six. Now, um, we see a we see some things about this mark. We get some snapshots of, about this mark, and I see I found one in Isaiah thirty six verse six. The Bible says, "Lo, thou trusteth in the staff of this broken reed of on Egypt." There's uh, the Antichrist, his power. Whereon, if a man lean, if you're going to lean unto the Antichrist. It will go into his hand. How? And pierce it. So whatever this mark is, which goes in the right hand or in the forehead, is they're going through and putting something in your forehead or punch piercing through and put something in the right hand. It says, So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him, which is a picture of the Antichrist. And uh, I mentioned this before, but Satan wants to number everyone. He's really into numbering people. He wants to know how many people he has under his power, under his control. And when he has everybody numbered, it's easier for him to track down and manipulate and uh, find out who's really on his side and who's not. Uh, there won't be any privacy in, during the tribulation period. It, it'll be worse than it is now. And for this numbering, look at First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So there you go. He, he likes to number. And that, that was one of the rules God didn't like. He didn't want David to number the people. But he did through the influence of the devil. And notice that uh, this thing, like I said, it goes into the forehead. We see a picture of this in 1 Samuel seventeen forty nine with, uh, of all people, David and Goliath. The Bible says, And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And what does it say? It says that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. It's a perfect picture of Jesus Christ uh, defeating the mark of the beast and uh, with just a stone, uh, the stone being Jesus Christ, the, the stone that the builders rejected. Now, another thing you want to notice that during the tribulation period, there won't be any rich people. Uh, you won't be able to be rich, you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. So if you have riches, that means you have the mark of the beast. And uh, there's warnings that go out about that in the book of James. Now James is written to the 12 tribes scattered the, abroad. Now we can apply uh, parts of James uh, and many passages of James to the body of Christ, but it's mainly written to the Jews in dispersion during the tribulation period. And uh, it's it says this in James 5, 1, verses 1 through 3. Go to now, ye rich men. 
So here's a warning to rich people during the tribulation period. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you because you took the mark of the beast and you're going to reap what you sow. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You're going to eat their own bodies. And ye have, tre ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. So let's talk about the last days. James talking about the rich people and a warning to them, this particular group of people during the end of the tribulation period. And uh, for the 666, the Bible says that if you have uh, him that hath wisdom, or here is wisdom, if you have understanding, count the number of the beast. Uh, you will be able to uh, count the numbers up and uh, in his name, in his... Uh, and it'll be connected uh, with his name, the Antichrist, and it'll be it'll add up to 666. For this, Daniel 12, verses 9 and 10 says, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. There's the judgment seat and tried. Okay? But the wicked shall do wickedly, because they'll be left during the tribulation, and none of the wicked shall understand, because they're going to take the mark of the beast. But the wise shall understand. Those that have wisdom, let them count the number of the beast. Um, so there it is. There's chapter 13. And uh, I thank God we're not going to be here for that. I know many will still continue to, to believe that the church will go through the tribulation period. But we are the bride of Christ. We're a spouse to Christ. And uh, we will be with Him. We're one body with Him. The tribulation is for those that reject. Those that uh, refuse to 